Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of 2 John chapter 1 and verse 9 through 11. Amen. John chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. Christopher, Jeff, Daniel, God bless y'all, my brothers in the Lord. Amen. Glad to have you, Pastor Mike, my other brother from another mother. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. Please share the broadcast tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Well, glory. Praise the Lord. If you got your Bibles, like I said, go to 2 John, the first chapter, verses 9 through 11. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Madison, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glad you're on here today at the broadcast with us. Amen. I mean, tonight, of course. Amen. I didn't even remember it was Wednesday. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You can see where my mind's been. It's been on everything else. I didn't know that, my, that I had come up on Wednesday. So, Thank the Lord, even though I got preoccupied, God is still on time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And a lot of people actually seem to like the broadcast being later in the afternoon than they do in the earlier morning part. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Who? Now, let me uh, go ahead and pray first. Hallelujah, Father. I pray that your glory would be felt tonight. I pray you would hide me behind the cross, that the word that you have inspired men to write would come forth with truth, knowledge, and understanding. Let people be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, hallelujah, amen, amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to entitle the message what it really means to lay on of hands. What it really means to lay on of hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whosoever, uh, 2 John 1 and 9, says, Whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Why? Because he has the Spirit. The Lord is in him. He is teaching him. The Bible said the Holy Spirit is called, get this, the Spirit of Truth. Coy, God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of Truth. So if they have the Father and they have the Son, they automatically have the Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If there come another, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So, let me say this. If you welcome somebody into your home that does not preach the same doctrine that you were saved by, the same Holy Ghost, the same Father in Heaven, if they do not preach that Bible the way it was written and inspired and breathed by God, then you're not even to welcome them into your home. Who am I talking about right there? Of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses. They do not preach the inspired Word of God. They preach another Bible. They preach another doctrine, the Book of Mormon. They, they teach something contrary to, to the word of the living God. 
Hey, Sister Tanya, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glad to have you on the program. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Love you, sister. Praise the Lord. Amen. But he said, Who, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Let me tell you something. We are to try the spirits, hello, by the Spirit to see if it be of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said any spirit that says that God did not come in the flesh is an anti-Christ. Any person that just accepts God as a, a, a man and nothing more has not received the knowledge of the truth of the Word of God. And you know why? Because these last in wicked days, the Bible says Satan has blinded their eyes to the truth that they may believe a lie and be damned. Heaven help us all, Lord Jesus. There's a lot of people living their life right now and they think they're right with God. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end leadeth to his own destruction. Well, I've got the grace of God. I've got I've got His mercy. But honey, let me tell you something. His mercy and His grace is not a license to sin. The Bible said it very clearly in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Because where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There has got to be a level of holiness. There has got to be something in our spirit that clicks. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit bears witness. Bears witness with our spirit that we are born again. But let me tell you, if you went and got baptized and went down a dry devil and came up a wet one and there was no change you just got a bath with everybody in front of everybody with your clothes on that's all you did there has got to be a change let me tell you if water baptism could save you every time you take a bath you get born again it's not about water baptism that's a part of the kingdom that's a part of being a born again believer amen thank you Lord Jesus but it ain't the requirement to get to heaven Water baptism, not a requirement. Speaking in tongues, not a requirement. You ain't got to speak in tongues to go to heaven. I know a lot of Baptist brothers. I was related to a few of them myself. They didn't pray in tongues, but they loved Jesus. They never sought the gift like they should have, so they missed out on receiving the fullness of the Spirit. Amen? There is a part in the Spirit. Now let me explain something to you, my friends. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who was absent, Lord have mercy, on the day of Pentecost? Judas. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Judas was absent on the day of Pentecost. One, because he done committed suicide. But two, the Bible said he received a part in the ministry. He didn't receive the fullness of God. He didn't receive the Holy Spirit like they received the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go a little bit further now. Amen. Not, I'm not picking on Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm just talking about if you're going to be a real witness for God, learn to be a witness for God. A friend of mine who was a, a, a dear pastor friend of mine once said, I told the people when I came up to their door to pray for them, he said, and I've said it too, he said, they would say, are you a Jehovah's Witness? And he said, no, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, but I'm a witness for Jehovah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to learn to be a witness for the Lord. I'm telling you something. If you're a pastor, a prophet, a teacher, a preacher, an evangelist, you've got to do one thing. 
continue to do the work of an evangelist. I'm telling you something. Every pastor should be out there on the front line. Everybody should be out there doing the work of the evangelist. Going about every day telling about Jesus Christ. Going into the highways and the byways. Compelling the lost and dying to come in. I remember one time recently we was at the mall and my niece told me, Macy told me, she said, you always talk about Jesus everywhere we go. I said, now that's a good thing because that's how it should be. We should always talk about Jesus. Amen. Thank you, sister. She said, I love this program. Sister Tain said, I love this program. Preach, Brother Henry Robert Kidd. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. If there come any unto you bringing a, not this doctrine, the doctrine that God has come in the flesh. That's what doctrine you need to listen for. If they preach to you another gospel, and they preach to you that God did not come in the flesh, reject their message. The Bible said, if a man or angel comes, an angel, Paul mentioned that in another chapter of the Bible, he said, if a man or an angel comes to you preaching another gospel, he said, may that angel even be damned to hell. Now that's in your Bible. He said, if they preach in another gospel, that angel didn't come from God, it came from the devil. Because the Bible said that Satan masquerades, what? Watch this, as an angel of light. He looks real, he looked good, he, he knows how to dress it up, and he knows how to say it good, and make you think he's the man. But my Bible said the day is coming, brothers and sisters in Christ, that that thing that has bothered us, that little thorn in our flesh, will stand before God and the people are going to look at him and say, is this the thing? Is this the little piss ant? Is this the trouble that made the nations tremble with fear? This little thing who has no power. This little sorry thing. I'm definitely praying for you, Sister Cheryl, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. People don't understand the enemy is not all-powerful. God is all-powerful. You know the enemy has to go and get permission from God to bother you. He can't just... Now, there's, there's two reasons... We would be bothered by the enemy. I'm not trying to get off topic here. The Lord's just taking me down a different trail now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at this, y'all. There's two reasons a demon or, or the devil himself would bother you. One, because you're in sin, and your sin is allowing him to find a way to get to your family. It's finding a way to get into your life. And so he comes through your sin or through your sanctification. You're walking with God, you're living holy, and all of a sudden, bam, the storm comes. The devil hits you. Let, let me explain something to you, my friends. When the disciples were on the boat, hello, the Bible said Jesus was on the boat with them when the storm came and the floods came crashing in. Jesus Christ was with them in the boat. Let me tell you, the the storm, if you're really with the Lord, the storm don't get calmer. Sometimes it gets crazier before it gets calm. You've heard of the calm before the storm? Well, let me tell you something. When you're going in this thing with Jesus, look at this, y'all. He just introduced himself to them. And what is the first thing Jesus preaches to them before he gets on the boat with them to go and face the devil head on? 
He's going to the people of the Gadareans. And he says, he says to them, he said, if you got faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. He's preaching faith into them. And then he gets caught up into prayer. And this is what me and you will probably never be uh, accused of, staying in prayer too long. He gets to praying, and, and, he, and they get on the boat. He prays one time so long that they leave without him and he meets them walking on the water. But here's one time that Jesus is just now meeting them and Jesus is preaching faith into them and then after he gets done preaching faith into them, he said, let us go over to the other side. But do you know what happened? The Bible said that there was other little ships around Jesus. Wait a minute now. There was other little ships around in the boat. They, they, they was around the boat and they were going and following. But watch this. The Bible says that the little ships that were beside the big ship that Jesus was on began to get tossed in the storm as well. You know what? You're not the only one going through a storm, but honey, let me tell you, because Jesus is in your boat, if you got Jesus in your boat, you're not going alone. And He will not let you down. He will not fail you one bit. Let me explain this to you. God will allow satanic attack for spiritual advancement. He'll allow it, but after a time, Satan has got to turn you loose. Yes, amen. You can ask for prayer. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, If they come unto you and bring another doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Now here's something interesting about the Muslims. The Muslims say that an angel appeared to Muhammad. Muhammad hears this word from this angel who is apparently Gabriel. And he said that Gabriel tells him that Jesus wasn't the son of God. Now wait a minute. Either, either Gabriel's getting Alzheimer's in his old age of being ancient, or that's a lying angel. That's a false spirit, a false angel. That's a demon. And he believes it, and he turns from God and turns to the darkness and begins to preach another gospel, another doctrine that does not come from the doctrine of Jesus Christ. The Masonic order does it. They make it look all godly and all good, but they preach a different gospel. They preach what the serpent did in the garden. But I love what Jesus said through John the Beloved. He said, For he that abideth in him, for he that biddeth him, sorry y'all, for he that biddeth this person God's speed that does not belong to God. Listen to this now, y'all. For he that biddeth him or her, God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. If let me say it like this, what we permit is what we'll participate in. See, the Bible says when Lot left Abraham, he pitched his tent toward Sodom. Then we see him in the city of Sodom. He pitched his tent near Sodom. Then he's at the gate of Sodom when we read about him again. And then he's in 
Sodom living there. So he went from facing the sin to participating, like, permitting it because see, Abraham asked God a question. He said, what if there are ten righteous? Will you destroy the city? And God said, when he got down to ten, God said, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy the city. But he found a certain number, eight people in the house of Lot. But it mentions the son-in-laws of Lot. It does not mention the sons of Lot. Why? When he's talking brethren, when he opens the door and says, My brethren, he does not mean, Hey, what's up, my friend? How you doing, buddy? He's talking about flesh and blood. He was related to two of the men that came to the door and wanted to sleep with the angels. His own sons had got caught in homosexuality because I'm excited to tell you this right here. That's why he offered his virgin daughters. He said, take these women for they have not known a man. Why did he offer his daughters? Because he knew even though his sons had become perverted in their mind, they would not allow their sisters to be raped by men or have any sexual advances done to them in any way, shape, or form. He knew his their brothers would defend them. But yes, Lot's children got caught up in homosexuality. That's another reason that Lot's wife looked back. Because he had to leave his sons in Sodom. He had to let God judge them. He, he, he could plead for them for a season. He could pray for them, but after a while, God said, let me have it. Let me do what I'm going to do. God will not draw a man always. His word said that in Genesis 6. He says, My spirit will not always strive with man. He'll not always convict man of their sin, for man is wicked. His days are going to be shortened because he's wicked. See, people say, Oh, I'm going to live 120 years. I've heard that stuff all my life because of one thing they read in the Bible and it said God gave them 120 years of life on earth honey do you know that 120 years was not Lord have mercy help me Jesus it was not a promise of life for 120 years it was a countdown to judgment day God gave them 120 years to repent because the Bible said that Job lived 140 years. So if Job lived 140 years and man is allotted 120, that don't make sense. Either God is telling us one thing and we've been heard something else, or we need to get in our Bible and find out what God is truly saying. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He didn't say that man would just live 120 years. No. It was a countdown to the judgment call. God said, I'm giving them 120 years to repent. And out of 120 years, only Noah, his sons, and their wives, and his wife was saved. You know, I really feel bad about his mother-in-law. It never said what happened to her. <laughs> Come on, somebody. If you can't laugh at that, I'm sorry for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But I want to get into a serious note here. Now, I know I've been to some rambling on, but what I've been doing is building a foundation by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. A lot of people, 
You will see them going around. I'll ordain you if you come here. I'll ordain you if you do this. I'll ordain, I'll ordain, I'll ordain. What about if God has ordained it, it shall be ordained? Not if you ordain it, because you can't take God's place, baby. Hallelujah. I'm getting into my preaching mode right there. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But do you know what? A lot of people have gotten slothful in their faith. And I'm going to say it like this. Slothful faith is awful faith. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Slothful faith will lead you a hundred and... Uh, hallelujah. Just message me later. I'll explain it to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. But a lot of people become slothful. And what is slothful? That means unapathetic. They don't have no concern. They don't have no mercy on people. They're just like, live your own life. I'm going to do what I want to do. You do what you want to do. They become slothful in their faith. The Bible says we are to work out our own faith with fear and our own salvation with fear and trembling. Hold on, I'm not done yet. I'm almost done though. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Let me say this right here. When he says you are not to lay hands on no man suddenly, 1 Timothy 5.22 He's talking about ordaining somebody in the church. He said, if you lay hands on somebody suddenly, you become a partaker of their sin. Ooh. You will become a partaker of their sin. You know, let me explain to you what's going on. I lay hands on you, and you're not living right for God, and you're... You're ordained under this ministry and you got the name Hour for Revival tagged to your life and you go around and you preach a different doctrine out of what I different than what I preach. I'm considered a part of your group. Because they're going to look at me and say, "Didn't you ordain them? Didn't you lay hands on them?" and say they were filled with the Spirit. Now they're preaching a different gospel, a different doctrine other than the doctrine of the Lord, and that means I'm responsible because let me explain something to you. The Bible says pray for those in authority because they will give an, an account for your soul. Every word I'm preaching out of this Bible, I will stand before God and give an account. I hold being a pastor very seriously. When you, when you call me pastor, and, and, and there's a few of you that call me dad, when, when you call me dad and I'm a spiritual father in your life, I take that very, very seriously. It blesses me. It touches my heart. But I take it serious because I know God's going to hold me to a higher standard than He holds other people. And I'm not afraid to preach what's in this Bible. If it's in the Bible, I'm going to preach it. Let me tell you, I'm afraid not to preach it. Okay, i got a fear of God. If I don't preach it, I'll be in trouble with God. So, I'm not afraid of what you think. I'm afraid of what God says. If he don't like it, I'm in trouble. If you don't like it, you can just cut me off and go on to your next page. But I've got to stand before God. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. There should be a level of fear in our life. Not a fear of, oh, the Lord's going to strike me down. No. A godly reverence, a godly fear. Watch this. Lord, I love you. And I don't want to break your heart. 
where you say don't do something help me not to do it paul said that that i should do i don't do and that which i do i shouldn't do he had struggles in his soul every day paul had a demon tormenting him every day he would say who do you think you are man of god he got caught up in the presence of God and saw and heard things that wasn't lawful for a man to utter. And then Satan gets in his hearing and says, Who do you think you are? How many of you are like that when you get something from God and the devil says, Who do you think you are? Whatever the thorn in the flesh was, which I think it was the souls that Paul took out of this world and took them home to heaven, I believe the devil ate it, Paul, about that. Every time God did a miracle through Paul, every time he laid hands on the sick and they recovered, I guarantee you the enemy came up to him and said, Look at that, Paul. Ain't it interesting you killed people just like that? They gonna kill you one day, hoss. You think you gonna get away from this? I'm gonna get you, Paul. Death will come one day. Because you killed all these people, so God's going to get you. You think you're really saved, Paul? You think you're really born again? You ain't nothing but a whip pup. And I got you in a cage. That's what the enemy will lie to you and say. He'll make you think, oh God, I'm not really saved. Am I really saved? That's what the enemy will do to you. He'll make you think, is there really a heaven? Yeah, there is. And yes, you're really saved. If you truly come to the foot of the cross and believe Jesus Christ is God in flesh, that he died on the cross and was risen from the dead by the Father, by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you will be saved. If you believe he was born of a virgin, you've got to believe he was born of a virgin, though. The virgin birth is a part of the whole deity and identity of our Messiah. He was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, came and died that you could live with him. Because God loved you so much, he refused to live without you. Can I say that one more time? God loved you so much, he refused to live without you. He said, I'm going to leave heaven and all of its great glory so I can live with my family. I want them back so bad ever since the fall. I miss my family. I'm coming back home to get them. I'm coming to get them and bring them back to me. I don't care what price I have to pay. And he became the living sacrifice that we might live. He's both lamb and priest. He's both king and servant. And he's drawing to your heart today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, we got to know who walks among, who labors with us in the kingdom work. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12. How do we know it? By the Spirit of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this. There's two people in the Bible. One that wanted to get the gift of laying on of hands so he could invest in it. He wanted to have Peter get paid off to give him the Holy Ghost. Acts 8 and 18. He wanted him to, to buy him off. He said, let me buy this Holy Ghost that whoever I lay hands on would receive him. Wait a minute. Hold on now. Laying on of hands ordination. He said, I see money in this. Anoint me. Ordain me. Fill me up 
with the Spirit. And he said, so I can go and charge and get people filled with the Spirit. That's what he was saying. He was trying to make a racketeering out of God's righteousness. Good Lord, have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. That's why the Bible said, freely you've received, freely give. He's not for sale. The Holy Ghost cannot be bought. If the Holy Ghost could be bought, the rich would own him and the poor couldn't afford him. Help me, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabba Shakura Madasa. Inadidi Hilando Saradamashai. Mmm, Jesus. Behold, I come quickly. I come quickly, and my reward is with me, says the Lord. Repent and turn from the direction of destruction that you are headed, says the Spirit of grace, for I call to you tonight says the Lord, I call to you as one who calls for his own son who says, come home son, it's getting later than you think, says the Lord. Oh, I hear the Lord say to tell you, repent, the hour is at hand that the Son of Man comes. Only those who have made themselves ready will go with me, says the Lord. Ready your heart. Ready your heart, says the Lord, for I am waiting on you. Whew. Love you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Pam, if you'll put your prayer request on here, I'll, I'll pray for you right, right in just a few seconds. Pastor Michael, God bless you. Brother Randy, God bless you. Amen. I felt a shift in the Holy Ghost right there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. I hope there will be so many people sharing this message tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me say something to you real quick, y'all. Matthew 8 and 8. It talks about how he sent the word and the servant was healed. Matthew 5 and tw uh, Psalms 107 and 20. He said, I sent my word and healed their disease. There's sometimes in the Bible that Jesus would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. He promises us that in the book of Matthew 16 and 18. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But now wait a minute. Jesus just walked by people. And they were healed. The same with Peter's shadow. When God used Peter's shadow, he would just move his shadow across and people would be delivered and healed that had demon spirits. Remember the Bible said that God did great miracles, mighty miracles through the hands of Paul. So it ain't wrong to lay hands on somebody. But let me tell you, honey, you do got to be prayed up and fasted up to rebuke a demon power. I'm telling you that right now. You've got to be in the spirit and you've got to be under the anointing or that thing could jump off on you for seriousness because the Bible said that the the sons of Sceva, the seven sons of Sceva, I, I'm going to pray for you in just a second, Sister Pam. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The seven sons of Sceva who were professional exorcists. Do you know there's a lot of professional preachers out there that don't know how to cast out a demon? Lord Jesus, have mercy. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. But 
let me explain what happened. The sons of Sceva looked at this demon-possessed person and said, We cast you out in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Meaning, they had no relationship. They had no right in God because they did not know God. They were using his name in, in vain. It ain't just when you slam your finger and, with a hammer and you take God's name in vain. That's taking his name in vain too. That's called blasphemy. But wait a minute now. Do you know that if you say, Oh, I'm going to do something for you, Lord, and you never do it, you've took his name in vain? If you say, God called me, and you wouldn't call, you took his name in vain? But these... Idiots, I'm going to say exactly like they were, they were idiots. They laid hands on this demon-possessed person and said, We cast you out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. The demon thought about it for a second. He said, Hmm, let me look on the record books here. Uh, let me look at our list of names. Uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know. Uh, but who are you? He, he said, I know Jesus. I, I know Jesus is God in flesh. But I know that Paul is a son of God. I know that his name is in the book of life. I know that he was once a man of darkness. Now he's a son of light. And I know that he belongs to God. But who are you to say in the name of Jesus? Because at his name, demons both fear and tremble. That's why they're going to say on that day to Jesus, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name? Did we not heal the sick in your name? Do you, do you, do you realize the word we there? They were taking glory for God's name. Now listen to this, y'all. This is something my sister Tanya has been trying to tell me for years and I was studying the Bible tonight and finally it clicked in my head. I ain't got to lay hands on everybody. You, you watching me, I ain't got to lay hands on you. I just got to believe God for you and God will do the rest of it. Because let me tell you something. The Bible said that the centurion, Romans 8, 8, said if you'll just send the word, my servant will be healed. What about the woman whose daughter was sick and dying? What did Jesus do? He sent the word. Because the daughter, the mother of the daughter said, Jesus, I'm not asking for everything. I'm just asking for the crumbs from the table. Why? Because she said, I, I, know, I'm a, I know I'm a Gentile. And these are your people. But Lord, I believe your word. And he shifted time and space for that lady. And he said, go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And from that hour, just like with the centurion, when the centurion got there, he, the Bible said that the centurion found out from the hour that he had left. Jesus had done the miracle. The demon spirit had gone out of that servant. The demon spirit had gone out of that little girl just by the word of God. He said, Mama, by your faith, it's done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You know, Jesus, it records a few times where Jesus laid hands on somebody. And they will recover. But even more amazing, he would just pass by people and demons would come out. Souls would be saved. Sick bodies would be healed. Bondages that had been in addictions in people's life forever were destroyed by the anointing of God. Just being on Jesus. Jesus is the authority. The name of Jesus, the power of His Holy Spirit, is our authority in the earth. 
He said, Behold, I give you power over all the works of the devil. He didn't say some. He said, I deputize you and give you authority over all the works of the devil. If you have the Holy Spirit, let me explain something to you right now, baby. If you have the true Holy Spirit, this is the authority. God has deputized you with the Holy Ghost. If you've been born again and spirit-filled, let me tell you something. You have been given authority in Jesus' name to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Everything that was done by the Holy Ghost through Jesus will be done in your life. Hallelujah. God never gave a resume. He never retired and he's never been fired. Amen. Glory to God. You can't fire him and he'll never retire. Praise the Lord. I can't live without him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Because as Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ. <laughs> that lives in me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you're watching this broadcast, Sister Pam, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that by the stripes of Jesus, you are made completely every whit whole. In Jesus' name, Sister Cheryl, I stand in full agreement for you that God would give you wisdom and discernment concerning what to do in Jesus' name and where to go, Father God. In Jesus' name right now, oh Lord Jesus, I see in the Spirit she is on a road like to Emmaus. But I'm here to tell you, God has not abandoned you. God says to tell you, yes, I still speak in the thunder. Yes, I still call in the gentle rain. And the Lord says to tell you, my spirit is with you even now, mighty to deliver you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you're sick in your body, my friends, I declare in the well, verse, let me pray this with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right now, if you're lost or backslid, pray this prayer of me. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross, that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, every one of you that's been sick in your body is healed. I declare a creative miracle from the body part rooms in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, by the power of of the Holy Ghost of God in Jesus. I stretch forth my hand in the name of Jesus and call it done by faith. I command healing. I command deliverance. Right now, every demon power, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you, go, come out of them and do not return in Jesus' name. I ask that the Father would fill everybody with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name that's watching, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. If you've been blessed by tonight, I want you to share the message. Uh, if you desire to um, write to us, let us know what God's done for you. That'd be wonderful. Our full revival at yahoo.com. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship if you got born again. I declare in the name of Jesus, I just send the word in Jesus' name, you are healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me right now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's done by faith. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the breaker. Glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. Thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.